Okay guys, so in this Grand Line tutorial of how to make macarons, I'm going to show you how to do the, the Italian meringue, which is going to go into the batter for the macarons. So I've got some water here, and I've got some sugar that's going to be for our syrup. And I've also got a pastry brush here with a bit of water in a bowl, which we're going to use to kind of brush down the sides of the, um, the pot so that when it the, the syrup kind of bubbles, it might form sugar crystals and that is like the worst thing that can happen for this syrup. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab a little bit of the water on the brush and kind of brush down those sugar crystals so that they stop it from making the syrup turn into just one big piece of sugar. What we're going to do is, in here I've got the, the other half of my egg whites ready to go. So once this reaches 110 degrees, some recipes say 115, but I like to start it at 110. We're going to put this on high to start whipping. So we're just going to get the eggs to foam up a little bit, the egg whites. Once it reaches 118 degrees, we're going to take it off the stove and we're going to put it straight into here, very slowly of course. And while it's mixing, it's going to kind of double in size and it's going to form our Italian meringue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to very carefully put in my sugar into the pot because we really don't want any of those pieces of sugar to kind of go on the sides. Now with the pot that you're using you're looking for something that's kind of deep because you want depending on what kind of thermometer you're using, I've got this kind of candy thermometer, you want to make sure that that bottom bit is actually submerged in the, the syrup otherwise it's not going to give you an accurate reading. Now some thermometers touch the bottom of the pot, that's probably something you want to avoid because it won't give you an accurate reading. We're going to carefully pour that water in and we're not going to stir this because it's just going to do its thing. The water will automatically melt the sugar and all we need to do is keep an eye on that temperature. So I'm going to pop it on here and we're just going to wait for the syrup to uh, kind of form and make sure that if you see any sugar crystals that you kind of just wipe them down. A disaster happening with this syrup. So I'm going to let that happen and I'll show you what to do next once it reaches 110 degrees. Okay guys, so we've almost reached 110 degrees. That should be 230 for uh, Fahrenheit. Um, as soon as we hit 110, it's going to happen really soon, we're going to put these egg whites on to foam up. Once we hit 118 degrees, it's going to happen very quickly, so you need to keep an eye on it. We're going to slowly pour it into the egg whites while it's mixing on high. Okay, so we're good to put them on. Just put them on a medium speed. All you're really looking for is to kind of break up the egg white and start it to foam up. Okay guys, so we've reached 118. Now we've got our egg whites. Foam up, and foamed up. We're going to very slowly pour in that syrup. And the reason why we put this in very slowly is because we don't want those egg whites to cook. We kind of just want to very slowly introduce that very hot syrup into the egg whites. Now we can see that the meringue is, is actually doubled in size. It's still very liquidy. I'll just show you guys. See, I mean, you can see that that's, that's dripping, that's at like a drip stage. Okay, so you should be using a metal bowl for this. Um, now, whipping it is not only going to help incorporate more air into that egg, uh, to the meringue, but it's also going to let the heat escape. So, if you feel the slide, towards the start, it's going to be very hot. And as it cools down, that's, you know, you know it's getting closer to being ready. Now you really, you don't want to overbeat this because if you overbeat it, your meringues will be very dry. So you can see there, what we're looking for is a beak peak. The meringue kind of folds over on itself. Uh, it's stiff enough to kind of form like a, a bird's beak almost. So we know that that's ready. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to mix the meringue with the TPT mixture that we made in the earlier video.